Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and <laughs> I made hamburger gravy last week. This week I'm going to make, um, I made hamburger gravy last week for my family and for freezer meals, which they absolutely love. This week, I got some of this beautiful breakfast sausage. This is from my local butcher, and I absolutely love it. And I got this to make sausage gravy. Now, yes, I got canned sausage for that, too, but sausage gravy will freeze very well for up to about three months. And then, you know, you have to get it used up. So, and it wouldn't last that long in my freezer for three months. It wouldn't last for three months anyway. My kids will wolf this down, but we're gonna we're gonna make a beautiful hamburger gravy or um, sausage gravy. And with this sausage, I don't have to season it because this is what my butcher makes homemade. And oh my goodness, it's got all the seasonings. The only thing I add to it is pepper. Well, of course, <laughs> my family loves pepper. But we're just gonna put this in here just like so in my big daddy pan. Let me get rid of this. And this stuff is gonna be absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get this browned up and get it going. And then you'll see how easy this is to put together. One thing I'm going to add to this that um, a lot of people don't normally add, and it's just a few onions. So I'm going to get my onions out of the fridge, and I'm not going to put too many in, but I am going to put a few in there. I'm only going to do about a handful, and that's it. No more. That's all I wanted. I absolutely love onions. I would load this with onions if it was me. I love onions. My husband likes onions, but again, they don't agree with him. So he can only have them in moderation. So if I put just a few in here, we, he, he can enjoy the flavor of the onions and it won't uh, make him sick. So, and I usually know what he can tolerate and what he can't. So it works good. So we're going to get this browned up, and when I get this all browned up, we'll be back. This is doing good, and I know I have to turn this this way, so i got a handle to hold on to. I love this pan. And yes, it's big on my stove, but you know, if I keep this food moving in here, then it does all get cooked pretty even. You can walk away from a pan this size, but not very long. Hopefully, when I get my new stove, I'll be able to just lay this pan across a couple of burners, and uh, it'll be wonderful. I'm excited for that. I am going to get a natural gas stove. Probably next week I'll be getting it. I got my eyes set on one. Oh my goodness. It's just like takes your breath away. Be still my heart. That stove and that range is beautiful. But it's like $3,000. Well, that isn't going to happen. So that's a uh, be still my heart and admire it from a distance. <laughs> but I am going to get them. They're not cheap. No. And uh, But you can find some nice ones for a good price. My goodness, as much as I cook for my family, I need one of those 46 inch ones that uh, have got, you know, eight burners on it and looks like a restaurant stove. Oh my goodness, I'd have every burner full of something.
we're in for a big storm. It's been crazy. We were 50 degrees. 50 degrees? 50 degrees the other day. All the snow melted. We don't have any snow up here in northern Michigan. At least not in my neck of the woods. And maybe a little bit. Well, it just started snowing here about two hours ago. So now we're in for, I think, three to six inches. And then it's going to get warm again. Because we are having a very mild winter here. And I'm right in the snow belt, too. So I was just looking outside. My driveway's white again. This, your family, if you like sausage gravy, you'll love this. The convenience of this, of having it cooked up in the freezer, ready to go. Now, if you wanted to can, you could can the sausage, but you cannot safely can the gravy. It just won't work that way. But it still makes for a quick meal, you know, not as quick as, you know, a freezer meal. That's just a matter of heating it up and serving it. But this will last about three months in your freezer. Wonderful for a, convenient, for a convenient meal. Now my husband told me, he said, do we get to have some of that tonight on those big beautiful rolls that you made? Remember these rolls, friends? There's only four left of them. I got one of my grandchildren are coming, so they're gonna have sausage gravy over those nice soft rolls. And they're gonna love it. All right, this is gonna cook now for a little bit. I gotta turn down so it doesn't burn and nothing ever sticks to the bottom of my pans. Somebody asked me how I keep my pans seasoned. You know, some people out there who, who are really into, I, I love cooking with cast iron. I've cooked with cast iron for many years, but there's people out there who swear by, you know, a certain way to season it and you can't wash it with soap, soap and water and all that. My pans, every time I use them, they get washed with soap and water. They get dried. I put them back on the stove, and then I heat them up a little bit. I pour a little bit of oil in them, and I wipe them out, and I hang them back up. Nothing ever sticks to my pans, and they never rust. And that's how I've always taken care of my pans. And uh, I've got a friend of mine who didn't you couldn't soak your pan or nothing like that or you know it's just not good for it but I've done it for years I'm not gonna leave food in my pan or cook something in my pan and let it you know just wipe it out and you know wait for the no thank you I got to wash it with soap and water I got to have it clean I don't want remnants of my last meal in my pan while I'm cooking something fresh Absolutely not. So my pans always get washed. Soap and water. I use Dawn dish soap, good hot soapy water. Scrub my pans up. Nothing ever sticks to them because I've got them pretty well coated. And uh, it's wonderful. Works out perfect for me that way. All right, that's going to cook down just a little bit more. I want that a little more brown. And then we'll get busy with the gravy. All righty. This is all brown beautiful. Looks good. Now I'm going to start with my flour. And I've got five pounds of meat here. My rule of thumb is you're going to need about a third cup or so per pound. So I'm going to start with one cup. Just, just to start. Okay, and I don't want that one. I want this one. Now I might have to add more flour. We'll find out. Because I want all the sausage coated. This is one of those things where you do more eyeballing than measuring. You know. And if I have to, I'll... I won't have to add more than mm, a cup and a half, but this is pretty good. I got quite a bit in here.
Now I'm going to add just a little bit more. Probably another third cup. And that should do it. That should do it right there. Coat all this. This stuff is wonderful. I love this stuff because, you know, if you buy regular pork sausage, you got to season it all up. This is breakfast sausage. This stuff is fantastic. And I know if you lived up here, you would love that, my local butcher. He's fantastic. He makes the homemade brats. And, well, I can make some brats. I can make good brats. I usually do that, too, in the summertime. All right. Well, we got that cooked up. Now I need my little... Somebody thought this was a putty scraper. This is a little scraper for a restaurant grill. And I use it on my... Get out of there. And I use it on my... Oh, it's sticking. There we go. I use it on my um, cast iron. Get up here. All right, we're going to start pouring in the milk. This thing's probably going to be chock full. And then it'll get all those little yummies off the bottom, too. It'll scrape it all right off there. Beautiful. Okay. That that's about good right there. Now the only thing that I'm gonna add to this a little bit of pepper. Who am I kidding? I'm going to add a lot of pepper. We love pepper. Look at that. Gorgeous. And if you want, you could use white pepper. Any of your white sauces, your cream soups that you make homemade, you can use white pepper. I don't because most of the time when I make cream soup, I'm adding it to something. So, I'm going to turn this up a little bit, because we need this to get thick. And the only way it's going to do that is if we bring it to a, a low boil. I'm getting those yummies off the bottom. Beautiful. It's the flour, actually, and a little bit of, of grease that was in this sausage, which wasn't much. There we go. And then once this cools down, yeah, I got food on my shirt. Oh, look at that, what I just did. Let me rinse this off. Okay. And once I get this cooled off, once it's done and it cools off, then I'll package it just like I did the hamburger gravy, right in Ziploc bags. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful. All right. We're just going to mix this around. They're going to love this. It's going to start thickening up pretty good. Beautiful. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I don't want it spattering. All right. Now I'm just gonna let this kind of simmer, and it'll thicken up a little more. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, friends. Ha! We got to taste this. We're going to turn that way down on low. See, I got to keep that moving a minute. Keep that moving. I got it down on low, so. Here's my spoon. And we're going to take a little taste of this. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Mmm. Perfect. You don't need to add anything to his breakfast sausage. It's just phenomenal. All right. So that's slowed down. I'm just going to let that simmer for a few minutes. And look how beautiful, beautiful that is. I don't need any more milk in there. It's perfect. So I'm going to put my stuff away while this simmers a little bit. And the next time you'll see this, it'll be on two beautiful biscuits or rolls. Did you get your rolls, Tootsie? Turn the microwave. My husband brought his microwave up from downstairs and put it in the sun porch. So they heated their rolls up with that. Howdy, friends. And you tasted this as soon as you walked in the door? Mm hmm Was it good? No. No? You better eat it all? Yeah. Almost, no. Like nobody Tracy. ever suffers. <laughs> like Tracy. I better eat all that so nobody else suffers. Look at that beautiful gravy. It's gorgeous. Okay, we're going to slide this up here. And we're, uh oh. I bet you my one. No, here it is. Here, right here. Nope, I got it. I got this. Okay, I'll use that. Those are those big rolls I made. All right. Oh my goodness, you're gonna look like you're eating for ten people. I told I told them my family eats all the government mules. You're gonna eat all this? Okay. Give it to Sadie. You gotta taste it for him, cause I'm. Oh, you gotta have more. <laughs> Hungry man. Here, let me do that one. Yeah. You don't want as much as Papa. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, you do? Mm. <laughs> good, friends. It's good stuff. There's not going to be anything to go in the freezer. <laughs> Look at that plate of food, <laughs> friends. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know what? I could not eat that much. I could. You can taste it from right over here, and you can taste it and tell them what you think. Right over here by right here. where Papa was. <laughs> Tell them hi, they haven't seen you in a while. Hello. What do you do, ride around with your cat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you know, you like that? Issues. Good mm -hmm. stuff? You know what, friends? I'm going to have mine on a little bit of rice. Okay, but I, there's no way I can eat that much. You eat more than some countries do. 
and pepper. Oh, yep, grind it. Like, Told you. My, <laughs> even my grandkids love pepper. You want more pepper on yours, Papa? I couldn't find it. It's all right. It's right here. <laughs> Take your plate. I'll give Papa his. Oh, you better not put it down. So it. Okay. We're going to go enjoy some dinner. <laughs> well, good morning, friends. It is the next day. And I got uh, sausage gravy. I'll take it care of. I had other people come to dinner, so there wasn't much left. I think they smell when I'm cooking it. But I got some cheese here. I'm just putzing. I got granddaughters. I've got three granddaughters here because school was canceled because we've got some nasty weather outside. So we're going to do some odds and ends for them today. I'm going to put together my chicken salad. But first, I want to cut up this cheese so they can just grab a piece out of the fridge if they want. And have that for a snack. I like to keep um, cheese and like pickled bologna or something in my fridge because my grandkids love it. My husband loves it. We all love cheese. So we keep that cut up and ready for a snack. I'll get this cut up and then we'll work on our chicken salad. And then we got a couple other things that I'm hoping to get to today. I've got lentils. I cooked up some lentils for the chickens. Because, you know, even though they're starting to lay eggs, they're doing very good with their new feed. I still want to supplement them a little bit for at least another month or so. And uh, to make sure they're good and healthy. Because I don't know what was wrong with the feed. I have no idea if it was just old feed that was sitting in the back of the, of the, uh, I guess I don't need to cut that one, of the back of the warehouse. I don't know if we got a hold of bad feed or what, but I just want to get them back to good health. Look at there. Nice big old container of cheese. Also, I'm going to, um make some homemade uh, pigs in a blanket. I do it with homemade dough. And you'll see that because I'll bring you along with me for that. I've got, I'm gonna cut up these veggies first. So that, well no, actually I'll just cut up this chicken. I got two beautiful breasts left over from when I cooked chicken the other day. And I thought I'm gonna make chicken salad with it because that'll make a nice lunch for the kids too. So we're just gonna cut this up. No rhyme, no reason, I just dice it up. This isn't the curry chicken I'm making. This is just chicken that I cooked in my uh, Instapot, Instant Pot. So we'll get this all cut up for chicken salad. bunch of chicken salad. Now, I'm going to take a couple of these. I might need more, I'm not sure, so we'll set this aside. I don't need this lid anymore. I'll give these a wash. chickens. That side's good. Cut that off. Cut that big end off. All right, I'm going to put this in my chicken bucket. I 
And we'll cut this up. I like to cut these up real small. And I also have some um, peppers that I cut up. They're in the freezer, but that's okay. I'm going to put some of them in here too. Because I love loaded chicken salad. It's wonderful. Get this all cut up and put together, and they'll have a little bit of. We can have a sandwich for lunch. And we got bread. I'm thinking I don't have any bread in the freezer because I just do it homemade, but I never freeze it. All right, we're gonna get that over here. I don't think I need the knife anymore either. Rinse my hands off. And wipe this up a little bit. I'm gonna put some onion in here. This is onion that I had cut up the other day. Okay. Will you run down to the root cellar for me? And in the white cabinet, there's uh, a jar of mayonnaise. Not not your your stuff, my mayonnaise. Yeah. Okay, I got some red peppers here. I'm gonna break up a few. Get these in there. Open this. There we go. Yeah. Let me give it one more good handful. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Okay. Seal this back up. All right. This can go back in my freezer. husband's run to the root cellar to get um, my nail. So I'm going out here. Oh, thank you. And let's see. I want some pepper in there and just a little bit of salt and some garlic and parsley. <laughs> okay, if you can see in my living room, it's upside down. All my grandkids. All right, that's good for the parsley. Now we're going to put a little bit of garlic powder in here. Just a little bit. Probably looks like a lot, but it's probably only a teaspoon. And of course, lots of pepper. And a little bit of salt. I grind my own salt so I got some chunkies in it. Okay, so now we're going to put some mayo in here. Oh, that's going to be wonderful stuff. I'm going to make the pigs in a blanket. Well, they'll have their choice for lunch. 
you know, because I'll have I'll have some chicken salad in the fridge, and I can make them like a cheesy tuna casserole, and we're gonna make the pigs in a blanket, so they could even have one of those. So today they're gonna get their choice. Usually I just make one thing and that's it. All right, let's get this mixed up. Beautiful. And I've got kidney beans. I'm out of canned kidney beans. So I've got kidney beans soaking because I don't do a, the quick soak method. I got them soaking, so tomorrow I'll be canning up some kidney beans, and I'll bring you along with that. I'll do a video on that so you all can see how that's done. For those of you who are new to canning, it's nice to have kidney beans on your shelf for when you make a chili or anything like that. That's what I keep them on there for is chili. All right, I'm going to taste just a piece of this chicken because I know the pepper is froze. And I want just to taste to make sure I got enough. Oh, that's a big old chunk. That's too big. Make sure I got enough seasonings and mayo. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That's perfect. I don't need anything more in there. All right, now I know it's not gonna fit in this bowl. I thought maybe it would. What's you doing? You're gonna tell me to get the giant bowl. Oh, no, <laughs> you're good. You can't have a sandwich with this yet. I don't know if you're gonna wanna eat this because I got onions and peppers in here. I can make him tuna fish. He loves that. I could make you tuna fish. We're gonna have just enough room in this bowl. All right. Look at there. Perfect. That turned out nice. Those peppers will thaw out in there. And that'll be a nice sandwich or on a salad. I like to put it on salad too. Beautiful. Quick and easy chicken salad. Many of you have asked me how I keep my pans so nicely seasoned. Um, this is my big daddy pan and I do this with the same with all my cast iron pans. Um, I wash them in hot soapy water after every use. I, I never just wipe them out and leave them set. They get washed with hot soapy water. And then I put them back on the stove to dry and I heat them up a little bit. And all I do is I put just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. I need a little bit more with the big pan, but you put a little bit of olive oil in there and you just start rubbing it around. So they're dry, they're on the stove. I got my stove on to heat this pan up because the pores in the cast iron will open up and it will pull in that oil. And that's what really puts your um, non-stick layer on there, is the oil that gets in the pores. And you can only do that when it's heated up. So I always heat it. Get that all rubbed around really good on the edges. I'll lift it up because this baby's hard. This thing's heavy. 
I put a little bit on the bottom. Not much, just a little bit. Just to keep it from rusting and looking nice. And I just leave it set right there. I just leave it set right there and cool off. And see how beautiful it is? And then I'll hang it in my pantry where it goes. And it's all ready for the next use. That's what I do with all my cast iron pans. It is so easy. But anyway, friends, that is it for this video today. Um, we did the sausage gravy, and I showed you my chicken salad. We've got some nice homemade um, freezer meals coming up, either for now or to freeze. And we're also going to do some canning coming up in upcoming videos. So for now, this is all I'm going to do today. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen. I hope you give both those recipes a try. And I'll see you in the next video.